well as a kind of conceptual uh, decolonial practice related to land-based art and hoping to share some of this uh, with you today. And I'm joining you from my home territories from Sukhwatmuk Utluh. Uh, and because of the nature of our uh, workshop today, I wanted to join you from outside. Um, so your patience with technologies of connectivity on an Indian reservation are appreciated, uh, though I have some recent better service that also just started to rain. Uh, but the workshop and the idea of site and being in place are all relevant for our work today. So I wanted to join you from, from outside. And I'm just gonna make space also, I believe we have another land acknowledgement uh, from Vancouver Artist Book Fair. Oh, sorry, thank you, okay. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, thank you for the uh, acknowledgement on behalf of Vancouver Artist Book Fair. And I also wanna add to that and just say that um, I lived in, on, on the coast in Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish territories for almost 10 years. And a lot of the work uh, that I did there with Redwire Native Youth Media Society, which was an indigenous youth magazine and uh, organization. I learned a lot from that work from urban indigenous youth, as well as from Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam members. And a lot of that work, uh, as well as my own experience as a Sukhwatmukh, mixed Sukhwatmukh and settler person, uh, led me back to my work that's now has me sort of in place, uh, has me in my home territories on the Sconleth Indian Reserve outside the small town of Chase, BC, um, which if your BC geography for small towns is limited, that's just outside of Kamloops, BC. Uh, and so um, Sukhwatmukh so Utluh, which I've said a few times, refers to uh, our territory, but also to our culture and our governance. And this way of thinking uh, has led me to a couple projects. One of them, Bush Gallery. This is an image from Bush Gallery, where I enact uh, collective and collaborative art practices land, which is also on an Indian reserve. So it recalls histories of the reserve, as well as um, injustices, uh, and is a practice that has me thinking a lot about art. And because I have this background also with publishing, uh, a lot of the work becomes uh, intersect, like there's an intersectional practice between art and writing sometimes. Um, and so this is an example of the Bush Gallery Manifesto. This is laser etched onto a piece of birch bark that I harvested. And uh, harvesting the bark is a cultural practice, um, usually for making birch bark baskets, which we call meme. Uh, but I also wanted to have this activation of this project, Bush Gallery, uh, and the text as kind of um, uh, burnt into the spark. So the laser is like a concentrated light beam. And so it's like this, um, it's like this sped up time uh, that uh, laser etches these words from a manifesto we wrote collaboratively in 2014 uh, with Peter Morian and Gabriel Hill, who I often enact um, Bush Gallery projects with, as well as Janine Freyna Uh And the manifesto is available and actually um, in English on a website. And so you can check it out at bushgallery.ca. But it's also the uh, work of translating the manifesto has been this recent practice uh, that has resulted in, i um, just going to skip one image here, actually I'll stay here, uh, resulted in a recent publication, this zine, uh, Bush Gallery uh, Manifestos and Other Emergencies. I have also a still image for you which won't be backwards. <laughs> Um, but I just I'm setting this up to uh, explain a bit about some context and background for this idea of citation. Uh, and then we're going to be active and go outside and, and make our own um, citation lists. But uh, so it's this idea of thinking through the knowledge contained in the land, Indigenous knowledge, specifically in my case, but not exclusively. Uh, here's an example of a sculpture project a few years back with Gabriel Hill and Janine Freyna Jutley. And you can see it includes uh, items that are found in and around me. So items from the land, as well as uh, items found on the land or in use on the land. And so it includes these uh, mullen leaves and a cedar sprig, as well as a stick 
that Janine brought with her that um, uh, was chewed by rabbits. And you can see the impressions of their teeth and we called it a rabbit sculpture. Um, but it's also the way they, you know, mammals, some that grow teeth um, uh, progressively, like they're always growing, they need to gnaw them down and also sharpen them and practice them. Uh, and so there's this beautiful little uh, twig uh, that had been multiple times gnawed on um, by rabbits, uh, as well as we have um, a kind of smock that Janine uh, was making. Uh, based on some Guachan designs, actually, uh, that we waxed and is balled up here. But so I just wanted to illustrate like that we're, I was using these things in an artistic practice, and then starting to really think of them in this idea of citation as well. So um, the idea of a text citation, the idea of a legacy of knowledge, where we recognize somebody before us, who usually has written down a piece of knowledge so you know a textual citation uh, but in this case i really started to think about indigenous ways of knowing as tied to the land and so what do those citations look like can they be you know non-text based can um can they infer the knowledge contained in the land and so this is a quick sketchbook list of works cited from Guayi or King Kam Inlet in the Broughton Archipelago. I was invited by um, uh, Marianne Nicholson, who's Kokwakiwak, to her home community of Guayi for an artist residency. And uh, in being there and kind of witnessing the land there, I created this list of citations, um, this charcoal from a fire. Uh, that's some hair of these um, beautiful wolf dogs that, if, uh, that the community had. Uh, there's some bits of uh, wood from the wood pile where people were smoking fish. Uh, there's some marks of the dirt, some tree lichen, and the tree lichen there grows in these amazing, it's like there's a fringed shawl in every tree. It grows down quite long and hangs down and is really visually striking. Also in Guayi at the time I was there in I think July, um, there are many, 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 many horse flies like like the most amount of horse flies I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> like you had to constantly be dancing because if you stood still for more than 15 seconds, you were getting bitten by a horse fly. <laughs> so there's a horse fly just uh, happens to be also on this uh, list of citations uh, and some salmon berry smear. So this smear of salmon berry. And so all of these are also kind of mnemonics for story. You know, they're triggers for memory, um, for story, uh, and for all the kinds of knowledge that you uh, need uh, or, or are possible from the land. You know, like I only know a little bit about this particular kind of um, tree lichen in Guayi, but I'm sure that there's a lot more that you could tell. Um, like here we have this black tree lichen uh, it's called wila in our language and it has all kinds of creation story attached to it uh so yeah i'm starting to think this way um i did a, a, pro a project called citation at bush gallery here on my land um we do practices like picking uh spuckbuck ui or saskatoon berries and so these are the feet of my son in his little flip flops and um, all of these berries that I picked in an afternoon with a number of visiting indigenous artists from the indigenous art intensive at UBC Okanagan. And those grow just kind of in and around me. And, you know, we made an offering and a prayer and gathered these together. And I really think about this as a kind of a decolonial art practice, as well as this site of knowledge. And so that brings me to our recent publication, a zine, which we made in accompaniment with our exhibition at um, Optica Artist Run Center with Momenta Biennial. And uh, this is a series of work that has culminated from a number of years of visiting artist residencies and collaborative work with the land here in Sokwatmahulu, here at my home. And the main um, the main kind of focus of this zine are a number of translations we made of the manifesto that we wrote in 2014. Uh, and I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger. And uh, so this is the Bush Gallery manifesto in Sukhwatmuk's Jean. Now I should say that I'm a Sukhwatmuk's Jean learner and my children go to Sukhwatmuk's Jean immersion, but I am not um, a fluent speaker. And so this was really a dream come true to work on this 
project which really came from kind of my work within contemporary art but then link it really strongly to place to Sukhwatmukh ways and aesthetics by translating what we wrote in English that what we wrote in English based on a kind of decolonial art practice and then translated into Sukhwatmukh's gene and the points and knowledge contained in translating that and thinking through these concepts um, were really enlightening uh, like for example bush gallery I didn't, we didn't just translate as like the word for bush and then what do you use for gallery for, <laughs> you know, indigenous art. We really, um, in the in the historical, the, the forest, the land was the gallery. So this translation, uh, 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 comes from a place where you might harvest and then make things. So this could be the forest floor, this could be a root digging area, um, or it could be a contemporary type of place to harvest and make. Um, also, if you get the zine, there is a really um, great recipe for gluten-free bannock um, that Peter Morin made. <laughs> and then also as a protocol, um, we wanted to also present the manifesto in Mohawk uh and gariaga uh, for this territory of jojage um, um, mohawk and anishinaabe moan pronunciation um that's my um sort of understanding at the moment but so we worked with a translator also for mohawk uh and this i had less connection with but we were able to um acknowledge and gift the translator for this incredible work of uh the manifesto translated into Mohawk. And so that leads us to the get active um, part of the workshop today. Uh, so I thought that we could um, together, uh, each of you in your individual places and spaces, uh, make our own list of citations. So this is an example of one um, back in the early spring and uh, includes um, deer hair from some hides I was working on. A uh, piece of cedar that has been, you know, dried out. Um, birch bark again, charcoal, um, pointed bones that my dogs have chewed. So importantly for this practice, it's also thinking through a kind of ephemera of what we find around ourselves and how we might um, think about knowledge being contained in that. Uh, another kind of citation is um, canning. So these are huckleberries, wenach that I canned in 2020. Um, but it's not like I went to the store and bought them and then canned them. These come from um, being on the side of a mountain with my family, a steep side of the mountain, and, uh, and picking wild berries together. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a few examples of some other citations that have been created with this kind of provocation. Uh, so this is a project where I sent in a, a bit of a different um, idea, sorry for the scrolling, for list of citations and invited people to make their own. And so people both took photographs of their citation and also wrote about their citations. So I, I like this one also because it includes like, you know, the things around us, glass, batteries, nails from various structures. Um, uh, so there's another one here. And then people also wrote a bit about their citations. So today, um, because the idea was to kind of be active and not just um, not just talk to you, but do something together. Um, and also, since many of you, I think, are probably on computers for a while, this hopefully is a nice break. I thought we could take um, about 15 minutes. Uh, we can leave our Zooms on, but muted, and walk outside if you can and take a stretch and look around you and think about this provocation, this idea of knowledge in the land or what things might contain knowledge and story that are in and around us. And this doesn't just have to be um, only natural materials, but I encourage you to also look for that contrast between natural materials and the urban environment and to think through indigenous territoriality and also our place within it. Uh, and to create our own uh, list of citations. So I've got one going here that I uh, will work on a bit. Uh, and then I'm just gonna take a photograph with my um, cell phone and then I'll be able to share the screen. If you can do the same, if you can take a quick snap and then share a bit about your citation. 
uh, and then we'll get into a little bit more storytelling through our practice of, of citation. So how does that sound? Okay, great. Sounds great. Yeah. Let's come back in, let's say it's 418. Let's come back at, um, I think, I don't want, I want to give you enough time to think and walk for a few minutes. So let's say like 435 ish, but I'm, we're going to leave the zoom on. I'm going to wander in my yard and, uh, but we don't need to interact, but yeah, let's, let's go, um, break, breathe, be outside and come back around 435 to share our projects. Awesome. I'll hang out here for a moment in case there's any questions. I'll, I'll go into silhouette though, cause I'm going to put down my computer, <laughs> which for some reason like puts me directly into a dark silhouette.
we'll just slowly be coming back. No rush on anything. People hopefully are enjoying a bit of a stretch, or a breath and a walk on a being outside. So we'll just slowly come back. And um, when people are feeling ready, we can share our new list of citations. I'll talk about this one in a few minutes when we come back or as we come back. Feel free to take a few more minutes to get your photograph if you can take one or you can also just explain um, any of the ideas related to this on our little break. I know that wasn't much time, but the idea is to kind of just start exercising thinking about this in a different way. Okay, it looks like we're it looks like we're all back. Maybe to um, I'm really excited to hear from anything you want to share from your citation. It can be one thing, it can be a few things, it can be like this, it can be um, however you've kind of thought about it. Um, I will just explain this one from earlier. Um, at the top, you have uh, some uh, papers from a hornet's nest had a large hornet's nest in a tree and it fell down in a windstorm, but it was a year old. So the hornets, I guess, had moved out and really they're like incredible architects. Uh, and it fell out of the tree though, while I was away and my dog kind of chewed it up. <laughs> but I've also heard of this being used as medicine for, um, for people who are uh, working too much. It's kind of uh, been told to me by Joseph Nehautau, um that it can be a busy bee medicine as a kind of a smudge. And below that you have Quetzalcoatl Esp or Yarrow, which is a, a woman's medicine, though I don't actually know any recipes on preparing it. So I think when I'm engaging in this practice of citation, I'm also noting things that I don't know and how much knowledge it's like, uh, maybe I, I'm like, it's like a quote you know, a quote in a book, but I still have actually so much to learn from that book of Yarrow. Um, then you have a grouse feather. There are many grouse here. And below that you have an eagle feather that my son found on a walk just like 30 minutes before the workshop. And then you have a series of ghost berries and kinikinik berries. And there is a line of earth from uh, an excavation that was on my property. And we found some sort of sandy clay uh, and actually the the clay here or the sand here goes like 80 feet deep so it's like an ancient earth story in that I think our area geologically was like a um, lake bed and river bed uh, so that's what this line at the bottom is and then these are some flowers um, of a kind of a weed that I actually don't know the name of that flowers late into the fall and the bees love it and then you have a little leaf here Last year I discovered a very low, like we're talking like an inch and a half tall wild blueberry growing under some of the fir trees in the forest behind me. And I just realized like only just now, because I took a moment to look around like 10 minutes to look around in a different way than sometimes when I'm walking and doing other things that they turn this brilliant red um, in the fall. Uh, and there's other things with those beautiful little wild blueberries, but because um, uh, they grow so low to the ground that they feed other things. Um, 
and to harvest them, you need like a tiny comb. Anyway, there's so many beautiful things, right? So many levels of this knowledge. So I'm super excited to invite you to share any kind of thoughts you had uh, as you endeavored to make your citation. And please just um, turn your mic on and, uh, and share as you like. Oh, I can go. Can I can I share my screen? Yeah, uh, let's see. Um, I will. Yes, good point. I will. Okay. Okay. Great. Here. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just got this in my back alley just now. Uh, and you can see that I live in the city. <laughs> And uh, so there's some things that are super obvious uh, what they are, like the this uh, receipt, uh, the 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 beer can thing. Uh, this is like sort of like I have no idea what it is, but it was used in a garden, so it was brought here. It's so it doesn't really belong to the land. It was brought here from somewhere. This is a piece of cement with a little bit of asphalt in it. And then there's like this balloon, exploded balloon. That there is actually a reason for that, which is interesting. There's many, many kids in my street and all their birthday parties this year during all the summer and even now are in the alley out, outside, right? So there's always like balloons and people are always like, you know, the neighbors are always like hanging out in the alley. The children are always there. And yeah, the birthday parties are, are always like outside in the alley. This is basil from my 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 uh, garden. My, we had like a really failed garden this year, and the health of this basil shows it. I don't know what this flower is, and this piece of wood, same thing. It was in the bed of a garden, so it was probably not from the land. It was brought from somewhere else. This is shiso from our shiso plant. Shiso is like an Asian plant and we use the, you eat the leaves and you can make tea with the leaves and, and all sorts of things. It's like a very distinct flavor and we like it to eat it sometimes. Shiso is an invasive plant in, in, in Canada and in, North, in the United States and Canada. So if you plant it here, it becomes sort of like invasive and it takes over everything. Uh, but we have like in a vase here, and this is just the, the, the flowering that happens in, in, in the fall. The plant is, is, uh, is gone, so we just have this. So that's it. That's, that was my thing. I, was, I got even more garbage from these streets because I got excited. <laughs> but, and, and then I did a very bad job at editing, so I didn't edit much. It just like the, most things are, are there. So thank you. How can I stop sharing my things? Uh, I don't know how to stop to share this. I think there's a little button that says stop share, but that was so great, Eloisa. Thank you. Let's close this and then go back to here. And I don't Did know how to stop sharing on yeah, screen. Stopped. Okay, stop. Okay, cool. Thank you. Great. Who wants to uh, share a bit about their citation next? This is so exciting. I love, I always think like, is this too, like, it seems sometimes like a simple concept, but then it contains so much. So I'm excited every time I hear from somebody who's engaged in it. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it, yes. Oh, we did. We saw briefly, so that's good. <laughs> ah, onto the.
Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I like I like that it expresses the real and the now. It's um it's great. Thank you. And please everyone feel free to um to carry this forward. Like it can be a good starting place for story or for just recognizing things around us, just thinking through things in a different way. Thank you. I'll let uh I let somebody else. Oh yeah. Also, if I sorry, I've got to stop the share. And I will share Katie's cuz Katie you sent that to me. Do you want to Yeah. Thank Say a few you. words. Um, I'm just gonna bring it up now. Yeah, I uh, I just went outside into the yard, um, and um, like I just moved back uh, to Vancouver from um, Treaty Ten, where I um, grew up, and um, there's just coming back, like, and there's still being like flowers here is like a big. <laughs> You know, like there's still things like blossoming or even like, there's just like so many different kinds of like trees and like leaves and um, not knowing like what all these tree leaves are, but just being, you know, even uh, I was talking about it with someone else um, from Manitoba today. We just don't get a lot of red up in Northern Manitoba, Saskatchewan, like in our fall, you know, so thinking about, those like trees look there's still raspberries like it's just insane yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's just like where is this place um uh as i think about my family back home bundling up for for winter um but yeah and then of course some uh in, in amongst the the leaf material there's you know shiny objects uh a foil and and now masks which is poignant of this current moment in time Mm -hmm. so yeah it's just exciting to look also like yeah with this calendula the little flower uh when oh. I got here and I moved into this place and there was a bunch of calendula in the yard I got excited to like pick and, and dry the leaves and I haven't done that yet so this was an opportunity to start that. nice um see I didn't know what calendula looks like so that's really cool Great. Also, no, I, I play this. I play this silly game. What? Because I sometimes grow potatoes, and we play this ridiculous game when you're like the work is getting like too much, and you're getting a little delirious. Called rock or potato, where you dig it out of the earth, and you're like, is it a rock or is it a potato? For some reason. Anyway, this is really nerdy, but that is a good rock or potato example in your citation. Oh no, that is. I would good. be a stumper covered in dirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you, Katie. Also, those raspberries look luscious. <laughs> All right. Lois or Jenny, do either of you want to share? I can share. Okay. This was a great activity. Um, um what was I? Oh, so that I'm coming from um East Vancouver right now, or I'm in East Vancouver right now, which is, and sort of the south part of it. So I often say that um, it's Coast Salish territory, Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish, but it's not so far from Sasnan, the mm. what was called the city before the city, or in um, the museum um, project that Musqueam did, they called it the city before the city. Um, so I think about that a lot and feel very grateful. And I'm really grateful for this activity because when um, you described it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I'm thinking about my garden, um, the plants that I know really well, but also thinking about them as medicine because um, I'm facing a pretty serious surgery in the next little while. And so, I've had to, or I've, I've taken on the task of trying to figure out a um, mindfulness exercise that I can, you know, invoke when I need it. And the exercise that I came up with a couple of weeks ago is to walk from the back of the garden into the center of the garden. So from the back lane into the backyard. 
and just name all of the plants that I know that um, are in that sort of wander. Um, so today I thought, oh, that's perfect. I'll, you know, list them and um, maybe put them together as a, an arrangement. But what I didn't realize is they're so aromatic because there's rosemary and bay, bay leaf. Um, and then um, the fig tree is just putting out these, this strong um, aroma, probably from the figs that haven't ripened and they're kind of rotting a little bit. Um, and then there's indigenous plants too. There's the Mahonia, Oregon grape, and um, Salal. And actually, I think that's putting out an aroma as well. So it's kind of, um, anyway, it's, you've um, challenged me to get more sort of sensory awareness of all these things, which will really help my, my mindfulness um, exercise. So I came up with 17, 17 different plants. Wonderful. Thank you. Do you want to hear them all? Oh, yeah, sure. Yes, let's list them. Okay. Uh, raspberry, oregano, French sorrel, um, asparagus, rosemary, bay, calendula, sage. Oh, that's also very aromatic. Indigo, chives, kale, broccoli, salal, mah mahonia, Oregon grape, fig, and um, um, other grape, domestic grape, and a pitcher plant. That's also indigenous. Pitcher plant. Ooh, the pitcher plant. That's cool. Carnivorous plant. Well, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's for lovely. sure. There's probably bugs in there. <laughs> yeah. And a boggy type at, plant. Too. Yeah. At the end of its season. Mm hmm. Wow. That's so great. Yeah. So it will be. <laughs> Yeah, I like how also yours, yeah, it's taking the form of this arrangement. So fun. And also like there's so much to know about plants. That's why I said sometimes it's just about like me realizing what things I don't know or noticing things and putting them in context and just opening up to all of the knowledge around us that's actually written in the living organisms around us. Um, Jenny, did you have a one you're gonna show? Sure, I'll, I'll okay. share my screen. Um, okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so I have to say that I'm I'm Eloise's partner, and we live in the same house. But um, I went to the front instead of the back, so like, okay, so we okay, went in awesome. separate directions. Um, but anyways, this is what I came up with. Like I, um, these were from our balcony garden, but I guess I was just noticing that a lot of the stuff that I picked up are things that are transplanted from elsewhere. So this was like tomatoes that were from this, um, a friend's kind of community um, project, like this like Chinatown garden. Um, so like a friend gave us a bit of it and we potted it. And uh, those are also basil from pots, like that the same pot that Eliza got hers from. And, uh, and I guess like I noticed that I, um, when I move around, I feel like I look very suspicious. Like I'm always like kind of self-conscious about looking like I am, I don't know, being watched or like not really being up to, I don't, anyways, like, I, so I guess I like crept around and made my way to the alley, but um, I took this from this, like uh, this, like in the neighborhood, they're doing all these like beautification projects. So that um, on the end of each street, there's like a, little garden so I took this from there um and then this was pocket lint from my pocket um and then just some garbage from the alley where people often bring their garbage and then um people collect and hoard from as well um then the last thing that I really loved so much was like this spider had built a its own citation so like I didn't want to like destroy it and um I thought it was just so beautiful so I took a photo of it and uh and that was like the highlight of it. yeah um so I'll stop here. Yeah, I love it I I was noticing uh 
what was it? Stink bugs. Um, cause in the fall, a lot of stink bugs come or I forget what else they're called, but we call them stink bugs. You know, the ones that release a scent when you, anyway, I was noticing them caught in a spider web, quite a few of them. And then I looked up and I was like, Oh, it was this very big, those kinds of outdoor spiders. I don't know. I call them popcorn spiders cause they have a really white kind of backside. That's really big. Anyway, <laughs> reminded me of that, that I, I looked up after that and was like, wow, that is a large spider eating all those stink bugs. <laughs> Well, thank you all for sharing those. I mean, I'm endlessly like charmed and also like confronted with the ways in which our lives don't really acknowledge or pay, you know, attention to all these small moments. And so thank you for shifting uh, for a few minutes to, to engage with this concept uh, together. And I want to thank all the uh lives and spirits and ancestors and all the things that um crawl and fly that walk on four legs um all of the different living things that are connected to us and part of our ecologies in and around us and i i think it's like in those moments that there's so much knowledge to be shared um but we have to take the time to kind of shift and think differently and and to have moments where we center the land and ecology around us is what is, I'm sort of really interested in. So I really want to thank you for, for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. And you're, thank you're you. welcome. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome to make citations moving, moving forward. And uh, yeah, I continue to think about this. And um, thank you all for helping me also think about it from different places and transporting me to moments and stories in and around you. you. Yeah. Thank you. It's really a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Welcome Bye. to share them too. If, if you want your citations, please go ahead. Hopefully they're useful to you the reminders.